So here's an overview about the following presentation. What I pre present is the uh, RIN family from Renaissance Electronics. So currently we have two devices. In the next step, I will uh, step a little bit into the internal structure, explain block, block diagrams, accelerators, performance, and such kind of things. I will give you an introduction about the current uh, protocol overview. As mentioned, these are devices which are multi-protocol capable, including CC-Link, CC-Link IE. Then uh, we have a brand new starter kit available, which I will show you. And then, of course, this uh, starter kit will be also available to Renaissance customers. At the end, uh, there is an outlook and a short summary about what you have heard so far. Thank you. So what Renaissance currently has available are two family devices. On the left-hand side, you see the RIN32. Uh, CL stands for CC-Link. So this is capable to drive a CC-Link network with the uh, gigabit uh, Ethernet. Further on, as it's a multi-protocol device, some other protocols are also supported. Here on the left-hand side are the Ethernet protocols, and on the other side, non-Ethernet protocols, which are based on a different hardware, like can open and other things. Here also you can find CC-Link. This is a general block diagram. So for these kind of family, so there's a commonality between everything. So there are internal blocks for peripherals. We have a Cortex-M3 uh, CPU running at 100 megahertz with uh, lots of internal RAM timers. Here is a very important part which is related to the internal accelerators, which I will explain in detail uh, later on. And here below are the specifics for the two device families, CL and EC. For CC-Link, uh, we have a CC-Link IE uh, field controller, which is connected to an EtherCAT Mac and a two-port Ethernet switch running at one gigabit per second. And the second device family has additional, uh, because this um, protocol is running only up to a level at 100 megabit per second, he is already an uh, internal phi included. When we are looking to, the, uh, net to a typical network structure, we have controller network, field network, and sensor network. So performance-wise, it goes from high level to low level. So the current uh, target of our uh, devices are more located here in the sensor network area. It means um, intelligent sensors, drives, inverters, and such kind of things. When going to the target applications, I said it's more related to the sensor level, but still, because uh, these devices have um, a very powerful Cortex-M3 CPU with lots of RAM and uh, performance, still small PLC applications are possible. Then coming to sensors and drives, so the RIN devices can take over the communication uh, with the master controller in all these uh, different protocols, including CC-Link, CC-Link IE. They are controlling intelligent sensors and network drives. Further on, as we have different interfaces for different uh, protocols, also gateway applications are possible where the uh, RIN devices are translating from one protocol to another. So this is a more concrete example. So as a background for you, uh, the RIN 32 and 3 CL for CC-Link has been developed in very close cooperation with uh, Mitsubishi in Japan. That's why also Mitsubishi had some uh, focus on the internal IP for CC-Link, CC-Link IE. That's why the internal functions are identical to these devices uh, which are already available, ASIC devices, I think. So all these are more or less integrated into the RIN devices. This comes to the situation that a design which is currently built like this of, uh, let's say, several components, CPU, uh, CC-Link and CC-Link IE components and so on, can be quite easily migrated to a, to a design which just has a few components. Then. The important thing now, we are coming to the internal structure. So this is quite uh, normal. So CPU, 
some memory interfaces and so on. The CC Link IE specific part, which takes over all the CC Link protocol parts. But then here are also very specific uh, blocks header, encoder, decoder, hardware, real time operating system, which already indicates that here we have very specific IPs which are accelerating certain parts inside the uh, industrial automation. So here in detail uh, the features which are included. Some of these are already seen in the uh, block diagrams. So high performance ARM Cortex M3 CPU running at 100 megahertz. The memory set is quite, quite huge, so 768 kilobyte of instruction memory and so on. Then uh, functional blocks, interrupt controller, accelerators for the uh, hardware real-time OS acceleration, Ethernet data accelerator, which we will see later on, gigabit switch. Then what is very important for the uh, real-time um, application in the in industrial automation is the IEEE, IEEE 1588, this BTP, Precision Time Protocol. And we have different network op options for different protocols. Further on, a huge set of uh, peripherals with, diff with uh, two channels, uh, lots of GPIOs, which can uh, directly communicate with very simple sensors, for example timers, everything comes in a very compact 324 ball package. Now I want to step more to the requirements of a real-time uh, network. So what is very important is of course stable operation, then we require high accuracy inside the system, we need real-time response and uh, we need high speed task change. And at the end, everything must be on a comparable low power. When we go and put these requirements on task level, the requirements uh, sound a little bit different. So what is needed is uh, between two tasks which are running on the CPU is a low latency and of course a low jitter. And at the end, different slaves which are using this device and which are using the protocol must run in an isochronous operation, which means every of these slaves are using the same time. When we want to achieve this, generally there is only one solution for this. We need a lot of accelerators because software is not uh, generating low latency, low jitter. Hardware is much faster. So this is now another block diagram, but only from the acceleration point of view. So uh, Renesas has developed the RIN engine, which is uh, located in this blue box. So this consists of the CPU, the hardware real-time operating system. It's an accelerator. Then we have a hardware Ethernet accelerator here under point two, some switch and so on. The specifics for CC Link and the other family and for uh, EtherCAD internal file. So now this page explains a bit more what is going on in this hardware real-time operating IP block. So when we are looking to a conventional approach, uh, the CPU is active in both. So it, it's running the tasks and when uh, something wants to change the condition, then also the real-time operating system requires the CPU. So generally this uh, latency or delay between uh, switching from one task to another is very much dependent upon the current situation in software and hardware. So this means at the end there is a huge amount of latency, uh, jitter, and it requires a comparable huge amount of power. So this is now explaining how our IP, the hardware RTOS accelerator, is functioning. So, as before, the CPU is running the tasks, but as soon as uh, the conditions in the system is uh, changing the tasks and environment, the hardware operating system acceleration is coming into the scene. So this means that the CPU stops, the hardware RTOS has already uh, the, the uh, 
the know-how which task is running at the next level. And everything is done here in hardware, which means the CPU is more or less sleeping, which on the one hand side results into less power. And because hardware Artos is uh, switching the uh, task environment on a hardware level, the task switching and task scheduling is much, much faster than in the conventional approach. So when uh, having a view to different commands and con different switching conditions, so the average of uh, switching tasks from one task to another gives a speed up factor of about five. Of course, this uh, hardware Artos IP does not uh, include each and every detail of an hardware of an uh, Artos operating system. So we have different functions which are implemented and which are running in hardware. So these are synchronization and communication functions. It's, it's functions related to task management, like start and exit tasks. It's also uh, status management and, last but not least, time management. So these are the functions on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, uh, there is an indication that this hardware RTOS block is also capable to direct switch to a dedicated task based on a simple interrupt line. So generally, the CPU does not know that it's an interrupt. It's everything, everything about this is controlled by this block. There is an interrupt, and it directly switches from one task to the another one which is behind this interrupt. Of course, there are some limitations when you implement something in hardware, so which is not limited as on software, but if it's done in hardware, you must specify what and how much uh, resources you want to uh, implement. So here in, in our RIN devices, the context number, so means the different tasks can switch between 64 tasks. So there is also a priority from 1 to 16. There are several event numbers, mailbox numbers, and um, element numbers. So in general, these set up here, which is uh, which is drawn in the table on the right-hand side, is, let's say, on a very high level. So um, based on discussions with our customers, so these resources are much, much higher than a usual, usual um, industrial automation uh, software is doing. Then coming to the uh, second acceleration portion, this is also uh, very important because many uh, a big portion of the um, communication in such a system is based upon uh, Ethernet, um, Ethernet um, comparison. So here are different functions. Header, encoder, decoder, checksum generation are the uh, most important ones. So when we are looking to, uh, here is an example, a UDP checksum of a data size of about 1.5k byte or an IP checksum, you see that the amount in software is quite huge. So here it's 165 microseconds, and here it's 2.8 microseconds. Our IP is capable to do this, these checksums on the fly, which means the uh, parameters are calculated while the data are passing. At the end, this means the data is available when the software, is, when the software needs a parameter. Then, second or the third uh, important IP is the internal gigabit switch, more or less a standard IP. But this is um, implemented in such a way that it supports different real-time uh, functions. Cut through, store and forward is one of the most important things. And also, I mentioned the IEEE uh, 1580A support, which is uh, very important for the synchronization between different slaves. This is now a diagram which so shows uh, the uh, performance acceleration when all um, accelerators are, let's say, active. So here is an area where three CPUs, competitive C CPUs, are mentioned. So these are running about 70 to 100 uh, megahertz, 
and are delivering a UDP communication rate of about 50 to 70 megabit per second. This is for our RIN devices totally different. So based upon these kind of accelerators, we have a much higher, higher data rate. For example, if the uh, RIN CPU is running at 100 percent at 100 megabit, the RIN devices can deliver 300, round about 300 megabit per second. So for the different protocol here, because it's uh, bounded to 100 megabit only, we get a share or a load for the communication which is just 30 percent, means 70 percent is available for the application. This is more or less the statement of this page. So, because of this high performance of uh, the Renault RIN devices, it's quite easy possible that these are these devices are not running the communication protocols. They are also capable of running the applications behind this. Now, a short overview about the stacks. So, please remember this is a multi-protocol device. So generally from left to, to right you see the protocols which are first running on standard hardware, standard TCP IP and UDP IP stack. Then you can also modify the stack, for example for Profinet RT. Then we have these two uh, family members of RIN which are using a very specific hardware here. That's why we have two different family members so far for this protocol and CC-Link IE. And uh, on the right hand side there is a selection of uh, field bus protocols which are using non-Ethernet interfaces. This is generally showing what is capable. Here is a snapshot of um, what we have currently implemented so far. Uh, for the uh, RIN32 M3 CC Link device, we uh, will have a starter kit very soon. So I got the first board uh, last, on last Friday. So both protocols are coming based upon this uh, close cooperation with, with Mitsubishi, also from Mitsubishi. So we have here also uh, some kind of uh, demo for Ethernet IP. These pro, uh, Profinet protocols are, let's say, under discussion currently with a yeah, very cl uh, close solution in the near future. So these will be also available. TCP IP, which can be used for vari various protocols, are available from Renesas. So when using this CL device, all these protocols can be supported in one single device via the same interface or via different interfaces. The second member is the lower one. So here in the middle we have a range where both family members are supporting more or less the same uh, protocols, which, mean, which means that uh, migration from the one to the other is more or less very easy. So I mentioned the starter kit. So this is generally available soon for our customers. So prototype was already uh, available since two, two months in Japan. But we expect that the commercial um, starter kit will be available in the next, next month, which means that this includes the evaluation board, of course, but also the CC-Link IE protocol software and some application software. So in the middle you see the RIN device, then we have CC-Link and CC-Link IE switches for board rate selection and such kind of things. Power supply, some debug connectors, then I2C, all the other things. Connectors for CC-Link IE and connectors for CC-Link. This is currently so far what we can deliver in detail with the uh, starter kit for CC Link IE. So we have users manuals for the device, of course, itself, but also such documentation is available for the board. Then we have software as well as uh, dedicated user manuals 
for CC Link IE network field and also the same for CC Link remote, de uh, remote device station. Uh, for CC Link device station and local station support is currently under um, planning. This comes along with application software, so this, this should make it uh, quite simple to, to implement uh, from the customer's point of view their own application. So also a board startup procedure is, is available which may, makes it quite simple to start up or to bring up the board quite easy. So that's it, more or less. So short outlook. So as you could see, the other family member had already a integrated five. So this is uh, so far not available for CC Link IE. But this is currently under planning that also the CC Link family member will get an included five. So this will further on reduce the cost for such a kind of system. It will require less board space and of course it simplifies the design very much. So at the end, a short summary. So for Renesas or on Renesas side, currently two RIN multi-protocol devices are available. So one of these family members is uh, implementing the CC Link IE with the gigabit interface. Then we have an EtherCAT and both are supporting a huge amount of different protocols so, so that it's uh, or with, which makes it possible to have one dedicated hardware which is running different pro protocols on the same hardware at the end. So the performance of these devices are quite high compared to our competitors. This is based upon certain amount of acceleration so this is done on the real-time operating system, which is doing the task scheduling on the software side. Then we have Ethernet or e e sorry Ethernet data processing uh, accelerators, which are taking the data while they are coming into the system and making some kind of checksum, and th and so on. And we have an integrated two-port gigabit Ethernet file with um, yeah cut through capabilities and other real-time functions. At the end, I didn't mention it before, there's also a host interface which means that the internal CPU can be switched off. So then the uh, RIN uh, devices are just, uh, let's say, black box for communication only and the um, host interface is serving the application even though even this kind of uh, structure is possible. This should also make it quite easy to integrate the RIN into available systems. Then CC Link IE starter cut will be available soon, most probably within next months. So this comes with a board which is going around this. There are CC Link IE and CC Link protocols already implemented, coming with a sample application and a huge amount of documentation. These are also already available on the Renaissance homepage along with many other information about our RIN devices. <laughs>